Good day, folks. In this video, I'm going to go over the video cache of the DJI Spark and how it corresponds with the DJI Go app. Now, if you're new to the Spark, this can be a little confusing. I know when I first got the Spark, I was a little thrown off by it. I was used to flying uh, the Bebop drone and the GoPro Karma drone. So this was kind of new to me, and I've been getting some questions on my website and uh, in my YouTube channel, and I uh, thought I'd go over and explain it. So when you go out and do a flight, it's going to record the high-res originals on the DJI Spark on the memory card, but it's also going to create a cache copy in the DJI Go 4 app. And that's where sometimes the confusion comes in because the copies that are on the DJI Go app are low resolution. They can be a little jumpy. They actually have audio if it's enabled. And uh, that's where the confusion comes in on what's original, what's the high res, how do you get them over, what it's all about. So let's go in and take a look at the settings first. So if we click on the three dots, the top right hand corner, you'll notice down here there's some options for video caching. And by default it's on. You can turn it off if you don't want it to cache videos right to the app. It also gives us how much storage it will use, so two gigabytes is what the default is. We can set it to also clear cache automatically so when the two gigabytes is reached it'll start clearing the oldest uh, files first. The other thing you can enable here is to record audio. So basically what that is is when you're out flying and you know it's capturing video footage for the cached files it's going to record audio from your device. So if you're doing commentary whatever's going on around you it's going to record. Now that audio will not be on the high res versions that are stored on the drone itself. So those are the settings. Now I don't use my iPad to fly my Spark so I have no files on here that we can use for demonstration purposes. So I'm just going to close this out and I'm going to do some quick recording here just so we have some files to work with. So I have it on the video and uh, record. There's my office plant, the remote, office plant, remote. So we'll shut that off. Now let's switch it over to photo. And let's just snap a couple photos so we can uh, show some examples of that as well. So we'll take a photo of that. Maybe we'll take a photo of the controller. A photo of my YouTube setup. Okay, so now, say we were just got home from a flight, we have recorded some video, we've taken some photos, now we want to check them out. So if we go to Editor, this is where you're going to find all your cached files right now. And up here in the album, we got the video. There's a the video we just took. There's some photos we just took. Oh, and it actually does have a few other photos that I've taken. And now what these are, these are the cached files. So they are low resolution. And if we play them, you know, they could be a little jumpy. And you can hear there. Oh, you might not be able to hear. But there's audio there because it picked up from my recording device. And same with photos. We can bring them up. Again, these are low resolution versions. They're the cached versions. And it is kind of nice because when you get home from a flight and you just want to do a quick edit or check out some of the content you've grabbed, you know, this is a nice way to do it. Now, another thing I should mention too, your cached video isn't always the full video. Sometimes it's a little smaller. I don't know why it's like that, but that's just how it is. And I'll show you in a minute what I mean. When we import the full res version, you'll see that it's a little longer. So we've checked everything out, now we want to download the originals. So I'm on videos right now, and uh, we click on it. There's a little button there, if you can see it. It says download original, and we can click on it. Now there's many ways to do this, and uh, this is actually the slowest way. I'm working on a video right now with some tips and tricks for transferring media, some stuff that will make this 100 times faster. Maybe not 100 times, but at least 10 times faster and uh, a lot of less headaches because if you've got a full day of shooting behind you and uh, you've got 30 gigabytes of content doing it this way will take you an hour two hours even it's very very slow and you can burn through just a couple batteries trying to get all your content if you're going to be editing it on your uh, 
phone or tablet. Now you can skip this step. If you plan on doing all your editing on a computer, you don't need to download the high res originals to your tablet or smartphone. You can just import them directly into a computer. But a lot of people do their editing right on their tablet, so just make sure you have enough room. Uh, some of the file sizes can be a little bit large. So it's now done. We have downloaded the high res original. So if we go back to our videos, you're going to see that there's two files there now. We've got the cached file that was originally here, and now we have the original file. When it's labeled original, that means that's the high res version right off the drone itself. So from here we can play it, do whatever we need to do. We can also do the same for photos. If we bring up the photo we took, again, download high res original. Photos tend to move a little quicker. Now when we go back, it's not like the video. You can see it's labeled as original, but it got rid of the cached copy. So now any photos that are in here are just the originals and we can do that for all of them. Another thing I just want to point out quick here, when we download the originals from the drone to the DJI Go 4 app, it's also going to make a copy in our camera roll. So they're there and that's kind of nice if you want to use another program to do your editing. You may not want to use the DJI Go 4 app, you might want to use Splice or the built-in uh, iPhone one, iMovie. So that's basically it and that's what a cached video file is on the DJI Spark. Like I said, I am working on a video that's going to show you much better techniques for transferring the video. Doing it this way through the Wi-Fi and the remote is very slow and cumbersome. Uh, there's a couple different techniques and uh, I'm going to go over all the different types of transferring you can do uh, via computer, smartphone. Well folks, thanks for watching this video. I'm hoping you found it useful if you're brand new and you were not quite sure what the video cache was all about. Now you know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did like it. It helps me grow my channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming Spark videos. Thanks a lot and we'll see you in the next one.